What's going on, Don't Unfriend Me Nation? Good morning. Matthew Spear from the Don't Unfriend Me Show. Good to have you here. Thanks for stopping by. I have to put out a disclaimer. Yes, this is about Vivek Ramaswamy. Why? Well, I'll tell you that in a second. But first, this isn't paid for by Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump, the DNC, the RNC, Howard Hughes, the Wright Brothers, um, Pfizer, BlackRock. I, I, this is mine. It's all mine. Everything you see here, all the behind the scenes that you don't see, it's mine. And the great thing about that is that I am beholden to no one. So I get to say whatever the hell I want and what I think. Now, there are some rules with me. And this is your first time visiting Don't Unfriend Me. Let me explain those rules. There are no rules. Loyalty is not designed for politicians. It's designed for my family, my friends, or a commitment that I make. And I certainly make no commitment to any candidate. Now, I will vote, and that vote is mine. And I will tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about all candidates because that's what I do. You may not like that. You may want me to take a side, but if I do that, it's not only disingenuous, but it's fabricated because then everything that I think or do is based upon my loyalty or dedication to one candidate. So do I like Nikki Haley? Sometimes. Do I like DeSantis? Sometimes. Do I like Trump? Sometimes. Do I like Vivek? Sometimes. Do I call them out? Yes. Do I celebrate when they say something right? Yes. But here's the issue. I'm not going after Vivek today because I have some ax to grind. It's that you are making me because you like him. You And I understand what's to like. He is slamming the people who you want to slam. He's going after the establishment that you want to go after yourself. But you're missing something. In fact, you're missing a lot. And the, the same monikers and the same qualifications that you run every other candidate for, Vivek is also guilty of. I'm going to show you that tonight. And the reason why is because, darn it, I care about you. Stick around. 15 seconds. I will be back right after these brief messages from Stillport. Do you want the truth? Are you tired of being so confused? You feel like your mouth up than the lies on the evening news. Well, just step right in. We can talk about it all as friends. And if you want, we can hug and kiss and make up for the body ends. Stillpoint, S-T-I-I-L-P-O-I-N-T, the Stillpoint band. Sorry for the longer intro, but it was really important for you to understand because a lot of people go, oh, this guy's a rhino. This guy, he's a paid shill. He's a Democrat operative. And, you know, th those people are helpless and just there's nothing I can do to help them. But this is something I can do. If we're going to put our heads in the sand and ignore what's around us, well, at least we need to be consistent. If you're going to hit Nikki Haley on her campaign contributions or who she spends time with, then you need to do the same for all the candidates. That's just fair. So let's get into it. Watch the video of Vivek in his performance. And it was a performance, a complete shift from where he was six months ago, where he was two years ago. I'll point that out tonight. Nikki Haley and Ramaswamy are from different sides of the fences or the track, so to speak. And there is a general disregard. And you can hear it in Ramaswamy's tone. Well, this created quite the controversy on my on my Facebook page. And people decided to go ahead and and say, well, I don't care. She's bought and paid for. She's this and that. And this is where this video is created. I'll show you some of those comments. But first, let's watch the video. One thing that Joe Biden and Nikki Haley have in common is that neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. Look at the blank expression. She doesn't know the names of the provinces that she wants to actually fight for. The only person more fascist than the Biden regime now is Nikki Haley. Nikki, I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. Yeah, he's got a woman problem. I'm just saying. He has a, he has a, she's a woman and her name is Nikki Haley problem. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die so she can buy a bigger house. 
Chris, Chris, do everybody a favor. Just walk yeah. yourself off that stage, enjoy a nice meal, yeah. and get the hell out of this yeah, place. Let, let me, Why am I the only person on the stage, at least, who can say that January 6th now does look like it was an inside job? That the government lied to us for 20 years about Saudi Arabia's involvement in 9-11? That the great replacement theory is not some grand right-wing conspiracy theory? That the 2020 election was indeed stolen by big tech? That the 2016 election, the one that Trump won for sure, was also one that was stolen from him by the national security <laughs> establishment. Okay. That actually Thank put you. Up the I don't know why they cut him off. I wanted to hear about Jimmy Hoffa and Bigfoot as well. Listen, uh, it, 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 he's appealing. And of course, conservatives are going to flock because they're dying for Trump. They won't say it. They're saying, oh, Trump shouldn't be a part of this debate. What does he have to prove? He's in the elite. No, no, they want him there. Everybody wants him there and they don't have Trump. So they get Vivek, which I've said he is simply uh, just controlled opposition for the Trump campaign. He's vying for uh, the Apprentice 2.0. He just wants a vice presidency. We all know this. This is why this guy has a TikTok account now and it's up in 1.3 million and he's posting every five minutes, even though he went after Haley's daughter, which is interesting. But this isn't the first time this guy's lied. It's not the first time he flip-flops. He does it all the time. I mean, hell, he didn't even vote up until two years ago. This guy knows nothing about the Constitution. He knows nothing about American politics because he hasn't been interested. In fact, all he's really been interested in is pushing vaccines and pushing his pharmaceutical companies into bankruptcy. Interesting. Let's get into it because I also want to say this. If Vivek happens to see this, I'd love to have you on my show. I would love to have you try to do what you did to Nikki Haley and Chris Christie and do it to me because the interesting thing is it's petulance. That's all it is. It's a child throwing a temper tantrum because whenever he's presented with a real question or presented with a facts, facts about his past, he always dodges and goes into attack mode. So let's do some attack mode, but with facts, because that's the most important part of all of this, I would guess. Vivek Ramaswamy, he adaptly tailors a narrative for the GOP primary voter. We've seen this. He presents a story of principled sacrifice and success. And according to his accounts and his accounts alone, he founded and led Royvant, a multi-million dollar American pharmaceutical company, and courageously relinquish his CEO role in 2021 due to his unwavering stance against ESG principles, despite opposition from his liberal workforce. While this narrative may initially appear enticing, it unravels under scrutiny, resembling the flip-flops that have plagued his campaign. Let's delve into the fundamentals and just give you the nuts straight. Ramaswamy financed his campaign by selling over $32 million in Royavant stock. And those options were actually cashed in in February of this year, suggesting prosperity for Royavant. However, the company reported staggering losses of $1.2 billion in its March 2023 financial report. Got out just ahead in time. This financial struggle is not new. During Ramaswamy's tenure in 2019 and 20, Royvon experienced significant net operating losses as well and a sharp decline in their revenue model. The puzzle emerges. How can a company consistently hemorrhaging billions maintain a stock value of over $10 per share? Maybe he's getting financial advice from, I don't know, Nancy Pelosi and her husband. The answer may lie in Ramaswamy's implementation of Royvant's diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. We've all heard about this initiative. Royvant Social Ventures, during his CEO tenure, participated in these practices. Despite vocal opposition to ESG principles, major institutional investors, including Morgan Stanley, Viking Global, and BlackRock, were all criticized by Ramaswamy. But they are among his largest stakeholders. Ironically, Ramaswamy's anti-woke campaign and book is funded by profits from the very policies he denounces. The irony deepens as we revisit Ramaswamy's involvement in Axovant Sciences, the Alzheimer drug in 2015, praises for the IPO based on expectations surrounding Enteperdine, touted as a breakthrough, crumbled upon closer inspection. Ramaswamy's solution involved a new trial conducted by none other than his mother, Dr. Geetha Ramaswamy, 
conveniently claiming improvement to support phase three trials. Despite a triumphant IPO, subsequent trials led to a 99% loss in value and a company name change. For Ramaswamy, the irony is that his company, Strive Asset Management, manages ETFs that include BlackRock. Before announcing his bid for the GOP presidential nomination, he co-founded the Ohio-based asset management firm to cash in on the right's anti-woke crusade. Ramaswamy's current presidential run appears to be just another scheme, allegedly aimed at blocking Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and anyone else that he deems will help sell his books. His campaign lacks serious interest in leading the nation. Past attempts to conceal ties to the Soros family and mRNA vaccine creators add to his deception. This pattern of generating media buzz, withdrawing before a crash, and leaving others to clean up the mess is disturbing, but consistent. Speaking of his books, where he has flip-flopped yet again, Ramaswamy wrote, Speaking of Trump, that he disapproved of his large-scale government spending and his tariff policies, more notably, he offered extended criticism of Trump's handling of his defeat in the 2020 election. He prominently included Trump in a section of his book titled, Sore Losers. He rejected Trump's election fraud claims as weak. He outlined how thoroughly these claims had been rejected by various authorities, including Trump-appointed judges. He argued of Trump that what he delivered in the end was just another tale of grievance and persecution complex that swallowed much of the Republican Party whole. He mocked how Trump had floated the idea that a 2022 Republican Senate primary in Pennsylvania was also rigged writing sarcastically that apparently even Republican primaries across space and time are specially rigged against Trump and his endorsed candidates. He also wrote, It was a dark day for democracy. The loser of the last election refused to concede the race, claimed the election was stolen, raised hundreds of millions of dollars from loyal supporters, and is considering running for executive office again. I'm referring to, of course, Donald J. Trump. In the most recent debate, as you just saw, Ramaswamy fed the public another International House of Pancakes special. As he is now in support of J6 being an inside job, the election being stolen, Larry Fink and BlackRock are the devil, and that COVID was a big pharma push. Are you catching on? Is it possible that this guy will say anything in order to garner your support? The prospect of a millennial con man masquerading as a presidential candidate is the last thing the Republican Party needs. If you're going to take after each candidate, that is a good thing. But don't overlook the wolf in sheep's clothing just because he pretends he is simply a different fleece of white with razor-sharp teeth and a carnivore with big, large eyes. He's still a wolf in a $3,000 suit. Lest you be fooled. Folks, thanks for watching the Don't Unfriend Me show. I hope this shed just a little bit of light on Vivek, and maybe, just maybe, we can hold the same standard for all candidates instead of pretending that one pile of shit is better than the other. Thank you so much. You can visit the Don't Unfriend Me show at thedumbshow.com. You can get all of our videos, all of our podcasts, some clothes, some coffee, mugs, all of that type of stuff. Of course, I'm selling uh, my soul to capitalism. I hope you enjoyed the show. We will see you tonight at 8 o'clock with a brand new show. We should have the dummies in the house. It'll be a fun time. You can watch it on Spreely.tv or the usual channels. Thanks so much for watching. God bless. Share this, please. Like it and follow. Good night. Adjusting transmitter output. This is the Don't Unfriend Me Show with your hosts, Matt, Leroy, Amy, Olivia, and Mike. Geopolitics, military analysis, and election coverage. Coming to you live on the Spreely.tv network and all major social media channels at The Dumb Show. Honest, direct, unfiltered. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We can agree, we can disagree, just don't unfriend me.